One of the questions I get asked a lot is, what is the best beginner resin printer? But the problem with answering that question depends on what you want as a beginner. Do you want a printer that's easier to use? One that walks you through the setup process? The one with the best customer support in case you have issues? Or the one with the best community telling you how to get the most out of it? When I hear that question, I think typically what most people associate best beginner printer with is what is the cheapest decent printer to get started with? Well, now that the Mars 3 Pro is all but gone unless you can find it lying around somewhere in an eBay shop or some online reseller, it's probably this one. And that's unfortunate because whilst this is sharper than the Mars 3 and Mars 4, and I'd argue the Mars 5 Ultra 2, we'll come back to that. It's unfortunate because there is one critical flaw that lets this one down. Hi, I'm Ross, and this is Fohammer Videos. If you've watched my earlier content, you'll probably assume I'm somewhat of an Elegoo fan. I'm not paid to say that, nor am I paid to make any of the videos promoting these printers. I only get paid if you buy one and use my affiliate link, so please do that when you decide on the right one for you. But I am an Alagu fan when it comes to resin printers because they've stayed consistent with their design language and the slow incremental changes with each generation has borne a wide lineup that I believe easily exceeds their competition in many ways. And when talking about beginner printers, and that typically means to me the lowest price printers, Elegoo have made a smart decision here because the base Mars 4 price was a huge jump from the Mars 3. And because of that, it was easy for me in the last generation to recommend the larger Mars 4 Max over the base Mars 4. But now, Elegoo have lowered the cost of the base Mars 5 with an incredibly smart decision in specification. Please pause the video and comment when you spot which feature is the best decision you think they made here. For now, let's walk through it. I like the look of the machine, I like the angles, I like the tech stripes on the lid, and I thought I'd get some crap in my Saturn 4 video for saying I really, really like the green casing, but it turns out, in the comments, I wasn't alone, and many people like me prefer the green to the Ultra's black. Externally, you have all your ports on the back right side, which I don't like, it makes it awkward to access the USB port, but I know it doesn't bother some people, because even though many of you silently agree, those who disagree do so very passionately. But whatever. If it matters to you, I showed it. If it doesn't, well, you'll tell me. Now it does have adjustable feet on the base to get it stable on your desk, which is a small feature, but I do like the addition. The green lift-off lid has a vent hole, which is compatible with both the Mars Mate and also now the internal chamber heater and air filter. And it's worth noting here that since the Mars 5 and Saturn 4 series, Elegoo has done away with internal filtration coming as standard. But the new externally powered heater has filters built in. They don't do a ton for filtering the air, but they do some. And the heater, which sucks air in at the bottom and pumps warm air out the top, will circulate that air around the chamber for more even heating up to a fixed 25 degrees Celsius. And yes, you do still end up with more heat at the top of the chamber, but at least it circulates. I'll have a separate video on the heater when I'm not recording in summertime. Right now, it's already well above 25 degrees in my room. It is worth saying though, that with this hole, you can either heat the chamber and filter internally, or not heat and connect a separate external filter hose. You can't do both. But to be fair, considering this would only be sucking hot air out anyway, it kind of makes sense. Inside the machine, you have a single linear rail and a lead screw. A basic affair, but it is a basic machine. I've seen no wobble issues, so I'm completely fine with this. And for anyone who's already watched any videos about this year's Mars and Saturn printers, I think we all agree at this point, we do not like the design of the build plate. The surface is lovely for adhesion and removal, but this two-tiered approach gives us a poorly accessible build plate, which gets covered in resin after every print. It's an annoyance that needs to be gracelessly cleaned out, or it'll drip when transferring the plate to your cleanup area. And as I've repeated now to the point I hope everyone is clear on it, the bed is also not auto-leveling, despite them saying auto-leveling. But all the brands are saying this, so don't give Elegoo crap about it, it's just a bad description of what this feature is, and other brands do it a similar way. All this is, is springs in the top plate, which compress when the plate touches the screen. 
that's how the printer knows where the zero location is. But if the plate is uneven, you can only marginally adjust it by rotating the inner screws on top of the plate. I tried to do this on my Saturn IV Ultra so I could show all of the process, but it's hardly adjustable at all when it easily could have been. To add fuel to the fire here, there's no grip on top of the plate, so when holding it, it can be slippy. I've warned about this in other videos and proved it to myself when making my multicolor resin prints video on the Saturn IV Ultra, and I dropped its vat on the screen, which pierced the release film. Thankfully, the screen was okay. Suffice to say, be careful, but I hope this generation is the last time we see this build plate design. Moving down to the VAT, there's not a lot to say. It's a VAT. It's the same VAT they use in the Saturn V Ultra, but this has a normal lift and retract printing mechanism where the Ultra has a tilting VAT. The build area on this, rounded to the nearest millimeter, is 143 by 90 by 150 millimeters. Slightly larger than the Mars V Ultra, but 1.5 centimeters shorter in build height. Personally, now that I've tried 10 inch printers, I do find it a struggle to go back to these smaller machines. If you need a smaller machine, fine, but I would honestly recommend striving for something a bit bigger, even if it's gonna cost you a bit of detail, but I'll come more onto the detail of this printer very shortly. Also, I am gonna do a separate video comparing the Mars 5 to the Ultra because with these features and more differences, these are two printers that definitely need such a video. But anyway, all in all, this is a basic affair when it comes to 3D printers. It's small, but it has all the right parts to get the job done, backed by Elegoo's history of making decent machines. Now, when we get to the screen, this is where things take a little bit of a turn. With all the high resolution screens on the market nowadays, this has taken what appears to be a step backwards from the Mars 4 line, because this is only a 4K screen. But don't count it out yet. One thing on its side is that it is slightly above what is referred to as true 4K, boasting a resolution of 4,098 pixels by 2,560. Considering this is not a 16.9 screen, that sounds correct. The more important metric I've often stressed is the pixel size, or as I've called it, AVC, which here is 35 microns. We'll talk more about this shortly. The last feature I want to cover before that is the UI. Now, as I've said in other reviews, I like that Elegoo tried something different with these horizontal displays, and I like the Elegoo UI has had an upgrade, a visual upgrade anyway, but the info on the display is just often too small to discern from a distance. And at the very least, I'd much like to see things like remaining print time from across the room. Maybe another slight redesign would help. I don't hate this, but it could be better. Oh, and also the slicer. Well, Elegoo bundle this with the new Chitu Box Basic. It used to be Chitu Box and Chitu Box Pro, but this new Basic 2.0 has several new sexier design elements that I'm growing to like. It works like Chitu Box always has, bar a couple of things. So just before I reveal the crux of this printer, two more things. One, did you spot which feature I think was the smart choice from Elegoo on this machine? Because if not, I'm about to reveal it. And two, the models I printed here are from Loot Studios, and I'm not paid to promote Loot Studios any more than I am this printer, which means if you sign up and make a purchase, I make a commission. If you like miniatures, sculptures, busts, or just more cool stuff, please check them out. There are links in the description, including one to a free bundle of models to try. These models are from their recent partnership with Arkham Horror, where they've created the Investigators and Beasties for a triumvirate of campaigns, and being the smart people they are, even scaled them up to 42mm to show off all the incredible detail, and that also makes them much easier to paint. But right then, here's the shocking double-edged sword. The best feature of this machine is the 4K display. Yeah, not only does this keep costs down, but I dare to say again that this is sharper than the 9K screen on the Mars 4 series and the Mars 5 Ultra 2. Please, if I'm wrong here, I need evidence because I can only talk about what I see with my own eyes and what I see with these exposure tests. Now look, I know I've been the one harping on about stop looking at K as a quality metric, look at pixel size. And that was true up until probably this last year. Now you can't look at either of them. 
And since this is a dedicated Mars 5 review, I'm going to stick to focusing on this printer for this video. And I'll explain the technical theory behind why the Mars 5 is sharper than its more expensive brother in my Mars 5 series comparison video. Because I'm actually still being schooled by someone smarter than me, someone who makes resin 3D printers. And I'll reveal them in a near to distant future video when their printers revealed. For now, I want to talk about the crux point of this machine. Now, I actually noticed on my basic Saturn 4 review, I switched over to the new Chitu Box 2.0 or Chitu Box Basic, it's now called. And under the advanced tab in the resin configuration, there were no options for anti aliasing or image blur, a feature I love because that's what softens and pretty much removes layer lines. This is an incredible feature for those of us who want small detailed prints that we then have to go on to paint. So yeah, I'm talking miniatures, but potentially jewellery and similar things too. Now, as I was doing my Saturn review, I emailed Elegoo and it was over a weekend, but I just went on to test it myself. I actually just reverted back to the old Chitu box and added the Saturn 4, enabled the feature and printed. And guess what? It works fine. Anti-aliasing and image blur, no problem on the Saturn 4 using the old version of Chitu box. So I just assumed it was because I had a beta version of the new Chitu box before it was even out to the public to use, and they just hadn't added these features yet. So I never brought it up in those reviews or the comparison videos. But when it came to doing this printer, the setting still isn't there in the new app, and you can't add this printer by default in the old app unless you create it manually, but then I don't think you can use the .goo format that this requires. So it was at this point that I went back to those emails from when I did the Saturn 4 review, and Elegoo had actually replied to confirm that the basic Saturn 4 doesn't support anti-aliasing, and so I expect the same is true now with the Mars 5. Now, if you remember, or you were around back then looking at printers, we had issues with the Mars 4 anti-aliasing when using the .goo file format. And as far as I know, this was never resolved. But now Elegoo have all but confirmed that anti-aliasing just isn't possible on these machines. And I expect it's due to limitations of an immature .goo file format or some dispute with Chitu systems, since it is clearly possible on the Saturn 4, and this is just some kind of software lock. But I've got to say, whatever the reason is, this is sad, to the point that whoever is stopping this should be embarrassed by it. Even the Mars 3 allowed anti-aliasing and image blur. But again, I'm going to talk more on why in my comparison video. But the point here is that the Mars 5 Basic is a sharper printer than the 5 Ultra, but it's let down by the fact that it can't even perform basic functions, be that due to Elegoo or Chitu Systems or whoever. And this needs sorting out, because if this feature worked, I'd not only be here telling you that this is clearly the best beginner printer, I'd even be recommending it over the Mars 5 Ultra 2. But I can't say that. It's not a bad machine, but whilst there are other 4K printers of this size and roughly this price on the market, which aren't quite as sharp in terms of print quality that we've got here, but do offer basic functions like anti-aliasing, I'm sad to say this is the first Elegoo printer of this generation that I can't just immediately recommend. And because of that, I guess I'm disappointed and this disappointment would extend to the saturn 4 too if it wasn't for the workaround of using the older version of chitu box and i'm not against anyone buying this you just have a decision to make do you want sharp prints but the increased likelihood of visible voxel lines or do you want to look elsewhere and get softer prints but the ability to reduce or even remove voxel lines altogether in 2024 this is not a limit you should even have to think about. So Elegoo, if you're watching, sort it out. And when or if you do, I'll update the description of this video so everyone knows about it. For everyone else, I'd like to say thanks for watching and a huge thanks goes to our members who are on screen now. Please consider joining them to get Discord roles, exclusive videos, early access, and more. Until next time, feed me Seymour. Fohammer out. Thank you.